righty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another One Piece chapter review, One Piece manga review. This is chapter 1005, Devil Child. Now, look, before I introduce Christian, I got to say, if we misinterpret anything that's different from the official, it's because we normally record these on Sundays after the official drops, but I have to produce a baseball game for UL tomorrow. And I don't know when that's going to end. And I don't want to hold up Christian's whole day. So we're doing it on Saturday with the unofficial. But that means you guys get the review on Sunday. So with that being said, joining me as always, the Zoro to my Luffy, the Zeph to my Sanji, the the uh, the Nami to my Robin, Mr. Christian Hollinger. Christian, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing well. Doing well. Can't complain. I, I see we still got the dragon art up. Speaking of that, yep. the dragon video will be dropping either on Monday or Tuesday. Sorry it didn't drop during the week, but it was supposed to drop Saturday. But the fact is we're recording this and we, the dragon video needs a lot of love and it needs, <coughs> excuse me, it needs eyes on it. And like, we don't want y'all to get the dragon video and then tomorrow get the review and nobody watch the dragon video because it's a really good theory on Monkey D. Dragon. So y'all are going to have yeah. a double dose of One Piece content. Also, is there a break next week? I didn't, I don't, I didn't I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, no break next week. Let, let's yeah. go. So that means y'all don't get a theory or a, a, or a, another arc review, but we're starting the next arc. Alabas is just a long arc. Yeah. So with that being said, y'all know how we do this. Basically, I summarize the chapter and then me and Christian talk about different things involved in the chapter. And this is pretty much the Sanji and Robin show. It's essentially Black Maria talking to Sanji. All the women, it, we see the, the continual Sanji trope. All the women are falling in love with him because he's true to his conviction. Black Maria hasn't fell in love with him yet, but she kind of is. I love that Black Maria pulls out brass knuckles. That just made me because I love Asuma. I love Brass Knuckles as a fighting gear for, like, characters. She pulls it out, starts busting his ass, saying, call for Robin, call for Robin. And Sanji basically calls for Robin. He's like, Robin-chan saved me. And she uh, basically, they set a trap for her. And everybody around the thing is like, how pathetic. And then, but the Straw Hats are like, Sanji, geez, Sanji. And then, uh, I don't know if it's Frankie or if it's Sok uh, Sasaki that says, this is obviously a trap. What kind of man does this? Ha 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 ha. I'm going to get your opinion on that. Jinbei's like, I wonder if he knows everybody can hear. And Marco, this is what kind of makes me realize Sanji did the right thing. Because Marco's like, what a lively bunch. And he's loving it. So that, I, I want to get your thoughts on that later. But then, basically, Nico Robin doesn't get fall for the trap because she's actually the person inside who everybody thought she was. Pulls off the mask and is like, yo... Uh, I'm here for you, Sanji. Giganto Mano spank and pops Black Maria in the face. And she's like, don't mess with my friends because that brings the devil out of me. And it does the eye shot. Beautiful. Haven't got that from Robin in a long time. And then, of course, our boy Brooke slices Sanji free, lets him go. All the, the monster women are like, oh, my gosh, Brooke, we don't like you. And he was like, bitch, y'all ugly, too. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and then Sanji was like, all right, I got to get out of here. I got to go where I'm more useful. And they're like, duh, get your ass the fuck up out of here. And Black and Black Maria's like, nah, you can't escape. And Nico Robin's like, nah, bitch, my nigga escaping. And she, she also says, you've made my day. Thanks for counting on me. And Sanji gives the hard eyes. The first time he gave the hard eyes the whole time, which to me shows growth. Uh, then we learn that all the little uh, one-eyed creatures or cyborgs that are giving information to Kaido and the different beast pirates. Thus, that means they find the location of Momonosuke and Yamato in uh, Shin Shinobu, uh, Momonosuke jumps into Yamato's boobs, which everybody's like, Momonosuke, you little perv, still getting it on, doing your thing. And then they break the door. Shinobu and, and Yamato fight their way out, so they're escaping. Jack is back up, which you have said you've been waiting for for a long time. Jack Jack's going to fight the Scabbers because he has a beef with Raizo and in Inu and Neku. That's where Sanji's headed, so maybe that's his fight. We don't know. We then see Black Maria take off her shirt, shows her tattoo with her with her man skull uh, weapon, which is basically a Japanese folklore about uh, how women trap men, essentially. And she's like the queen of that. 
And she's like, Nico Robin, you now belong to Kaido. And Nico's like, no, thanks. I'd rather die. And Brooke is like, oh, ho, ho, ho. and that's the chapter. Let's jump. Where do you want to start first, Christian? Because this is this is a pretty cut and dry chapter. But to me, there's a lot of subtext in this chapter. Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, I say we just, you know, we just start from the beginning, even though we just did a chapter review. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, from the beginning, we knew as soon as Sanji fell into the Oh My Lord trap that he was inevitably up against someone he wasn't going to be able to use his abilities against. So it was only a matter of time before we knew Robin or Nami was going to come in and save him. So this is, by all definitions, a very forecastable chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so the execution... I believe is is fine. Again, you know, I, I've I've kind of looked at how a lot of people have perceived this. The Discord was hot this week. Yeah, and a lot of times that 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 has to do with how I guess Sanji's character versus some of the other Straw Hats characters, you know, are perceived. Yeah, differ. You know, because you know, some people are gonna say, okay, well, Sanji took a massive L here. Well. For Sanji's character, it's not a giant L, right? It's actually a dub because also it shows how durable he is because he's still okay. I don't, I don't think Sanji, like, he might got some blood on him, but I really think he's, for example, I think he's less damaged than Zoro right now. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and there's, there's levels to that that we're going to cover here because it's like, okay, one... We all were saying things like, okay, well, he had time to defeat all of the male subordinates. He did not uh, touch any, any of the way women. harm any of the women. And that's why well, he didn't use hockey, which I thought is beautiful. Because, like, me and you talked about that last week. Why isn't he using hockey to at least defend himself? But he first, it's two things. Hockey's willpower, and he has no will to hit a woman. Secondly, if she would have hit him and hit his hockey, it could have injured her because his hockey is that strong. Exactly. So with that being said, that answers a lot of the questions as to what would have happened, uh, even to the point where that could be taken advantage of. Like, you know, if a woman puts herself in harm's way, Sanji would then go and take all of that damage for her. So it's evident that Sanji literally is completely hopeless in this situation. Um, and so one, you know, uh, him asking for help is good character growth because you know again this is a pre the, the the chapter later later goes on to reference Annie's lobby but before that uh if we remember when Sanji goes up against Khalifa uh when Nami shows up she's like were you even trying to win mm -hmm. like she is very critical of Sanji because she's like okay well sure I understand that you can't hit a woman and whatnot but like have you really been here just doing absolutely nothing because you're useless here. You should have called or done something to have gotten someone else here because Nico Robbins' life is on the line right now. So you're kind of like goofing off. So to a degree, for Sanji to come here and say, okay, I'm way too important right now. I'm taking damage. I should not be here. It's time for me to get somewhere else. And not only to do that, but then not call for Frankie or one of the guys to say, look, Robin, I know I believe in you. After you. I, you know what they, what they want. Everyone here knows what they want, but I still trust that you can take out this person. So that's a very, very good moment for Sanji. And, and I think and, that's powerful. Like, let's stay on that. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, I, and everybody's like, he's a part of the monster trio. He should be able to do this, blah, blah, blah. But it, it shows that he has 100% faith in his Nakama, just like, and also on the reverse, they understand in their, like, people are saying he should have hit the woman or he should have tried to escape. My thing was he should have, I said this before we discussed this, when I just read the spoilers of, he should have tried to leave. But now reading this, no, it really is better that it happened this way because they 100% believe in him and they understand and they're willing to accept his flaw. Well, not even a flaw. His moral compass of not hitting a woman and is the same way they accept Luffy's an idiot and they still they love him for that. And that's where your belief in someone else shows and your love for someone else, because they'll lift you up where you are weak. And that is what makes the Straw Hat such a strong crew. 
And it's time for Nam, it's time for Robin to really show that. And I love that from Nico Robin. Right. Now you did say something earlier that's actually interesting because uh, you know, I looked at it and then I actually watched a couple of other people's reactions and they brought up something that's very interesting. So you said that Robin was um one of the three eyed tribe that we speculated she You don't was. think so? But I think she is, but I don't believe that this is as straightforward as what we're seeing here, because mm. when you think about, OK, how did Robin supposedly spawn there all of a sudden? Because it's implied that Robin's body spawned there and Brooke had, you know, sliced through the webs with his soul of the underworld technique, uh, which froze and, you know, was made it capable of him slicing through all of uh, Black Mirror's webbing. But it's implied that Robin spawned there. So then, mm. OK. If Robin spawned there, where's her real body? Where's her real body? But it's implied that unless she's already awakened and we don't know this, and she has the ability to spawn anywhere, which she somewhat showed in Dress Rosa against Cavendish, who you know was way you know faster than her speed wise, but she was like, I can still spawn myself instantaneously on you, regardless of that. So what was brought to my attention is Robin should only be able to spawn herself from where she can see. Mm. So what's interesting about what Sanji may have done here, Sanji may know that, okay, Robin is that chick who's masquerading as a three-eyed tribe, but because of that, she's gathering intel because she's connected. That talisman connects her to allow her to see what's going on all around the um you know, the war at this time from all different angles. Yeah, all around so the she by him yelling like that, he's not blowing the real Robin's cover. Mm. Robin being there is, you know, can spawn a clone of her without the talisman because that's within her sight. But it also means that she can spawn herself almost anywhere in this war because that talisman connects her, showing her sight from Ooh, anywhere, which now I allows like her to be, you know, this... Um, possibly allows her to be, you know, in the background, being even more like Black Maria by being able to control multiple aspects at the same time, which brings levels to what Sanji's doing. Like, Sanji could have said, hey, Robin, like, I need your help, all casually, and then blew her cover, if that is her. Or he can yell as if Robin's not there and, you know, throw across his, uh, you know, shed his pride and do that. And, and, and you brought up a good point earlier. So when you look at the rest of the Straw Hats, Jimbe, who is new here, he's the only one who doesn't know the depths of Sanji's, you know, supposed weakness. So when he hears it, he's like, does he realize that, you know, he's calling for Nico Robin and everyone can hear and the world's coming after him? Well, yes, he realizes that. You weren't there for Eni's lobby. You don't understand how you know, inept Sanji is when it comes to a woman. So you see Nami immediately is like, okay, he's against a woman. This is not... This is not him. Not yeah. If this isn't him, he's not like he just got trampled by Jack or something. Wait, Christian, repeat, repeat what you just said for everybody, because I think that's important. All right. So, you know, again, it's it's essentially just Jimbe who, of the people who we know heard in the Straw Hats, seems to be a little bit out of the loop because Jimbe is the most recent join. So this is his first full adventure. He doesn't know, okay, Sanji is completely useless against women, period. Like he can't do anything. So he's the one who's like, okay, does is Sanji aware that his voice is being echoed to the entire landscape and people are, you know, avidly behind Robin trying to, you know, get her for their own means and purposes. And when you look at the rest of the Straw Hats, they already trusting Sanji and knowing him, such as Nami, immediately are able to recognize, okay, Sanji is not being trampled by some opponent that he can't beat because he's not powerful enough. He's in, a, he's in his worst case scenario. He's up against a woman or multiple women. So she doesn't doubt him for a second. Uh, Brooke and Robin respond immediately. Uh, you brought this up earlier. Um, it was, in my opinion, when out of Sasaki and Frankie, it was, uh, this is obviously a trap. Is Frankie, what kind of man does this? But the laugh is Sasaki. Ah, okay. So 
uh, in my opinion, that's Frankie saying, okay, this is obviously a trap. He's probably thinking that someone could echo or use Sanji's voice in order to lure Robin. So he's probably dismissing the fact that that's really Sanji, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, thinking that that's a trap to lure out Robin. Um, and Sasaki realizing that, okay, well, no, we don't have anyone or that we know of who can emulate, you know, someone's voice. He's like, no, that's really Sanji. Like, what kind of man, you Does know, cries voice. out for a woman? You know, so he's laughing at Sanji. Uh, but other than that, again, as you were saying, Marco's reaction is very telling, especially with how the anime and the manga line up. We get to see Whitebeard's family and the freedoms that they have, the trust that they have in one another. You don't really sense any kind of sexism amongst them. So, you know, there is no... You know, oh, well, a woman is weaker. You know, mm -hmm. we have, uh, we don't necessarily know that blue hair woman, or do we? Oh, no, that's Whitey B. Uh, that's, that's her. Okay. Yeah. All right. So she's telling Marco, you know, no, like, you got to stay on the ship. And Marco's like, well, I'm going to ask Pop. So Pop is like, you know, do as you wish. So obviously, we have very, very powerful, powerful women in one piece, and that's respected here. So Marco, hearing this, I believe he already realizes, okay. I've been around Odin, Odin who gave up, you know, chasing after Whitebeard because he's his observation arc is off the, the chain for Toki on that random island. It's like, OK, that's the Sanji piece. Sanji, you know, so I, I, I just believe Marco is aware. OK, this guy has absolute trust in his crew. I, I can probably sense where he's at. I know Black Maria is not <laughs> at his level. But he probably refuses to, you know. So he yep. already probably got gets this. So he's also already that shows at it shows yep. the difference between Kaido's crew, Whitebeard's yeah. crew, and the Straw Hats. It shows that to me, yeah. the Straw Hats are more similar to Whitebeard, Rogers, and Shanks's. Whereas yeah. even though Big Mom's crew is a legitimate family, there's a hierarchy and a meritocracy, and there's even more of a meritocracy in in um in black in um. Kaido's crew, which right. to me shows why they can't be king of the pirates is because they right. don't believe in their Nakama and they're right. not a Nakama. It's literally strength based. And even though Big Mom's crew is a family, they don't have the same type of love that you're supposed to have like the Straw Hats do. Right. So that that to me was definitely a beautiful moment, in my opinion. Uh, it also goes back to uh, obviously Innie's lobby uh, mm -hmm. because Again, I think that was also Sanji. I, I personally agree that, you know, Robin is still playing the uh, a secret agent as the Three-Eyed Tribe plant. Uh, so I believe that this is one of Robin's clones that she can, you know, create multiple times if she needs to be because she's physically there along with Brooke. But uh, to get into what you were saying earlier, Sanji ran off and he seemed to be fine. So I think that Sanji screamed out for Robin because he was like, okay, I've taken enough damage. It's time for me to get out of here, but I'm still fine. So with this, you know, segueing to what you said, we have Jack who's saying, okay, look, no, don't even come after the uh, scabbards. I will take care of them. Even on their, you know, deathbeds, they're not to be underestimated. Toby Robo cannot handle them. So not only is that a, you know, uh, diametrically opposing uh, concept to what Sanji just did where he's saying, Black Maria, I don't effectively trust you with this scenario. You have uh, Sanji who's saying, Robin, I do trust you with this scenario. Mm -hmm. So we get Sanji who's, you know, damaged to some degree and Jack who we know has recovered from his colossal damage on the roof uh, to some degree. And that's a very good matchup in my opinion right now. Personally, I'm hoping since we saw that Marco was not battling King and Queen. Yeah, let's save that because I want to talk about. Okay. Yeah, I want to talk about so, that. And so for now, you know, the, the, the damaged Prince and the damaged Jack, that that, that seems to be a good matchup. Uh, so before we, you know, get into um, that, I would like to say, you know, Robin's, um, you know, entrance here to me is something that I've been waiting on for a very, very long time. Same. Um, you know, Brooke shined <laughs> phenomenally in Whole Cake Island. Uh, I saw some criticism that people are saying, like, Brooke is still using the same exact technique for, like, 
the you know 50th chapter of the but road. Brooks a grown like Brooke is but, 90 something years old. He is right. this is all like to me, the straw hats are all reaching towards their primes. Like right. Frankie is now in his prime. Robin is technically in her prime, but Sanji, Zoro, Luffy, Usopp, and Nami, and Chopper to a certain extent are all going to that level of primes because in One Piece, it seems like your prime is from your 30 to like 45. And like... We see that, that that's actually what's interesting because I, I personally say, well, Brooke's prime is just starting in the sense that... Mm. Because of his devil fruit, you say, okay, well, his is unique to the soul in his death. So his devil fruit journey started when he died. So ah. he's only like 10 years old, devil fruit wise, if that makes sense. Like, I you know, mean, I get he you. died old. So now if you have these high expectations of Brooke, you say, okay, well, Brooke went from he had no one to grow with, no hockey blues, because he was on a ship by himself. So as soon as he found Luffy, he developed the underworld chill ice abilities. He That's showed off point. his speed, which is ridiculous, and it keeps growing. He, two years later, developed Soul King, which allows him to cut Prometheus and go up against Big Mom. So as far as a devil fruit combatant, Brooke is actually in his prime growing. So his devil fruit journey just started. So... I'm not complaining about the fact, I mean, this is it's the same thing as saying, like, well, Zora's still using she, she song song. Like, Brooks speed blitzing, hell freezing, you know, uh, slash. I, I can't pronounce the Japanese name, but every time he says, like, you know, I've already cut you, or I've already freed you, that's just epic Brooks. So I don't really know what the criticism is. Yeah, me uh, neither. I, I dig Underworld Chill. I, I, I definitely love that. I love that, like, apparently... I think Sanji was playing along, but it's like, did Brooke unironically speed split Sanji? Like, did Sanji not know he was already free? Like, that's nah, I think I, I, how, how he, like, oh, he had to because you're already free. Because to me, Sanji's the fastest straw hat, in my opinion. Right, right. But and like, his you know, observation has to be. He the, was like, he was like, whoa. Yeah. He was like, okay, Sanji, like, I, I get it. Like, you're playing your part, but it's like, <laughs> I always just love when Brooke was like, oh, Sanji, like, why are you, you good? Like, yeah. I'm already, <laughs> I already freed you, bro. So that to me was epic. But finally, you know, I've been saying for a long time, and you said it first, you know, in this review, Straw has are heading for their prime. So Robin needs to show some level of, um, you know, like killer intent to me. Because again, I'm somewhat of a meathead. And I remember, I want to say the last time Robin had a serious face and she really wanted to hurt someone that stuck out to me was on Skypea, uh, and it was mm. one of these random, you know, side characters, but he was going around destroying ancient history as Robin was reading it, and she literally was like, okay, no, like, you're going to die for that, and this is like, she's not seen by any of the other Straw Hats. She has that same kind of demonic aura, and she, like, literally, like, breaks all of this dude's arms, folds him in half, and then, like, drops him off a cliff, so it's like she literally murders him, but it's still like this dark side of Robin because no one else on the Straw Hat saw this. This is when she had wandered off. So it's also like when, to that point, not to cut you off, also to yeah, that yeah. point, that shows growth in Robin because the only other time she fought for something was something tied to her past and to her family, her old family. Right. Now we're seeing her use that power for what um, Jaguar D. Saul said for your Nakama, for your friends, for your family, you're going to find some people that you want to die for. And it's not just I'm dying for the sake of what O'Hara was trying to find. It's more than that. That's my dream. But just like Zoro said, if I can't protect Luffy and help him become the Pirate King, there's no point in me becoming the best swordsman. For Robin, there's no point in me learning the will of D and all this stuff if I can't allow Luffy to become the Pirate King. Right. And so to build on that even more, so you have Robin, who we all know tried to sacrifice herself during Innie's lobby to help these people because that's how she uh, thought that she could help her friends that Saul, you know, prophesized about. But now is the time where Robin's like, okay, this is my chance to, or this is my opportunity to fully go out for 
my note comma that just put his pride on the, on the side for me. And so I really got those vibes of like, she's truly channeling all of that darkness for her, you know, her, her family now. So I'm very excited to see that. Um, I think it's a long time coming. I mm-hmm. think uh, this is going to be a very good battle. Um, you, you see hockey? Does Robin get hockey? I think this is the time where we need to see something like where Usopp got a glimpse of observation hockey. I need to see something from Robin as far as I'm concerned um, in this fight. And I've been saying, you know, the same thing for Brooke. Um, I don't know where it's going to come from, but I still want to see Black Bros. Brooke, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm trying to manifest yeah. that. No, I see but, you. Um, I just yeah. want to see the Giganto Mono slap with a coat of arms on it. That, that, that that's that's it, man. And I I think it's really coming, especially because again, you know, when we see the look of relief on Robin, I mean on Sanji's face, uh, when Robin gets there, it's really gratifying because there's weight behind what Robin said. Like Crocodile did not necessarily treat her that great. She was an asset, so she knew that she was essentially safe, but it wasn't, you know, the experience that she got with the Straw Hats. So we really get this sense of, you know, when Sanji pleaded here, Robin was literally, literally, you know, like like pissed off. And this is yep. compounded from earlier when Kiko's arm fell through the, the cliff nice. uh, or from the roof. And... Zoro loses his shit and is like, okay, I'm tired of these games. With one shots of who and then talk shit to um, Queen. Robin's like, Zoro, I understand where you're coming I from. I feel so it, yeah. Robin's already been pissed off. You know, she saw Kiku's arm. So at this point, she's like, okay, Kiku's messed up. I don't know the status of um, the scabbards, but I'm sure she's heard at this point. And I'm not letting Sanji are. go through this. And, right. And she knows that, you know, people are going to hurt you know, the scabbards. Um, now, you know, she knows Sanji's been getting tortured by women and she knows he can't do anything in that situation. So she is legitimately ticked off. So I expect something yeah. major. I, that, that, that's all I can say. And you, and you uh, see the anger on yeah. her face. Like they drew, she, yeah. Oda does the lines. She yeah. even silhouettes her for a little bit with like, when she when she's like your last words and just basically that you've made my day just shows to me like all right Sanji you don't have to worry anymore I have this like I have we, this under control. We haven't even seen a panel like are those your last words? That right there was you know for me peak Robin t- uh, post time skip. Granted yes. she doesn't have that many moments, but that that's definitely like okay Robin you you definitely figured out like menacing pirate. Yeah, that, you've waited your time, like, and Oda's that, like, "It's time yeah. to, it's time to show." It's, it's like, I it's time. Like, I, I sense end of series Robin vibes right there. Like that's what I expect when I see Robin. It's just like, oh, you know, are those your last words? Like, ooh, that was perfect. Yep. Um, I don't know what Black Maria is up to. You know that 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 outfit. You know when she shed. The rest of her clothing, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen when she turned around. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but that's going to be interesting. Um, also, interesting that it's Brooke and Robin, Black Maria's giant, but it also seems like she has some control of fire, which means, okay, <clears throat> we got to use our giant, quote-unquote, Robin, with our ice to give some, like, yeah. they could make some cool combo moves with that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a while since we've seen uh, the Straw Hat Chiefs combo move, so I'm I'm very interested in that as well. I'm hoping that the uh, lore on that Soul Snatcher user um, or, you know, weapon somehow clashes with Soul King as well. I, I just want to see both of them go all out. Yep. Um, so, yeah, let, let, let's get into the Sanji Jack. Uh, all right, yeah, well, see, scenario. before we do that, I got to point right. out two things. Thing number one, just in Jimbe, we are seeing him fighting uh uh who's who, which I love. Mm-hmm. Jimbe yeah. is like not even stressing. He got his coat on like who's who. You easy for me, boy. I'm a ro- I'm a warlord. I'm former warlord. I just fought Big Mom. Like what a little cat gonna do? I just got to shout out Jimbe, looking looking badass. Yeah. Now, 
interestingly enough, mm. in the Marco panel, right above the Jimbe panel, you okay. see a butterfly, something else flying, yeah. Yeah. King fighting Marco. Where's Queen? I don't know. I and that, do not know. And that is why I'm asking, is Jack going to fight Sanji or will Carrot, some of the minks who we haven't seen with Eno and Neku fight Jack while Sanji, on his way there, gets stopped by Queen? That is a better theory than what I was coming up with. What I was thinking is, you know, Odin has known exactly what he's done with Sanji's portrayal. So I was going to say, you know, and then th this might be, you know, condescending to Jack fans, but I was going to say Jack was just going to be a warm up for Sanji. Like mm. it was time personally, you know, in my opinion, I, don't I like know that what, too. What, what hell memories is, but you know, I like to think that it's a compounding sort of state of mind, if that makes sense. So like when we first saw it in Fishman Island and he teamed up with Jim Bay against, I believe, Watasume. Yep. We saw that he was drawing on his time, you know, on Okama Island. So when you look at the, I guess, the grand portrayal of Sanji post time skip, he's been used as a sacrificial character time and time again in order to show the strength of whoever he's going up against, whether it be Virgo, Doflamingo, um, King, you know, anyone for the most part. Um, so it's like, okay, when comes the time where Sanji's like, okay, enough of this, you know, this is what I'm about to do. So Jack is beat up. We know that Sanji's beat up, but he's pissed off, or he at least I think he should be. Yeah. Uh, when he sees the state that the scabbards are in, you know, he I don't believe he saw Kiku's arm fall. No. Um, I'm, I have no idea. Well, yeah. So he had no. There's no, no way he did because he was gone. He was, he was he gone. jetted off by then. And Zoro and Luffy are the only ones who have actually seen them up close. So that tied with the fact that we believe that Hiori is the one who is there. Sanji's going to have a damsel in distress mm. to protect. And he should see his Nakama in the, you know, scabbards in a very bad condition. So I'm just thinking that. At some point, hell memories, in my opinion, should be this compounding thing of all these negative situations that he's been in in the post time skip. And I'm just expect I'm, I'm expecting him to like explode and say, OK, like enough is enough. And then I expect him to beat, you know, the shit out of Jack, basically. And then Queen's like, hmm, like I figured I couldn't, you know, expect Jack to clean up this mess. I have to clean up this mess and then you have Sanji versus Queen. But to your point, I don't know where Carrot is at the moment. Carrot should at this point, since I'm not getting Carrot for Nakama vibes over... Um, I'm getting Carrot for uh, Leader of the Minx vibes. Yeah, for Leader of the Minx at this point, because um, the Odin impersonator, you know, Kaido's daughter, is Yamato is, is the one that I'm getting for, you know, Nakama vibes right now. So with that being said, what is Carrot supposed to do? Um, I don't believe Inu and Neku are in any shape right now to fight Jack. Uh, so I don't see that happening. So I see even better is your theory about perhaps they can show up. Um, and we could combine ours because because yeah. I I like your hell's memory. Sanji shows up like he's gonna fight, gives one big attack, and then carrots like Sangoro, Sanji brother, or or whatever. I forget the Yaru that they add at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I got this. Don't worry, me and Wanda got this. And we see them go mink, and then Sanji's like, "All right, well, it's time to put the raid suit on." He yeah. puts it on and fights Queens. It, it's 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 overdue for Sanji to put the raid suit on. I don't understand why he put it on uh, to save Momonosuke. You know, whatever happened between him and King where King, you know, just left him there and he gets back up and he's like, damn, the raid suit's pretty durable. It's like, okay, well, you're in the middle of a war, so you should just have it on. So what I, you know, my, my theory with Jack and Queen was that what I was hoping is that Sanji would beat the crap out of Jack, 
just using, you know, his Diablo Jambi and Same. his baits so that we can get a firm understanding, okay, Sanji without the raid suit is low commander level roughly, or at least he's low commander level because he beat Jack. Then it's like, okay, he's going up against Queen, stacks on the raid suit, and now we have a good, you know, clash because now we can say power scaling wise, yeah, Sanji needs to be there because again, he's been used sacrificially rather than really getting his 1v1s. Yep. Uh, but that can still be established with Carrot and Wanda taking over. Um, anyway, so that that, that, that that is a good point. Also, it could be, because Yamato knows where they are, Yamato will have a fight. She could fight Jack, but I just don't see the connection emotionally to that. And that's why, to me, Jack seems like it has to be some sort of mink combo because the emotions there and then if you show right. Sanji in the raid suit when he meets Queen it's like you're a Vin Smoke and it's then you tie in C- Cyborg Queen versus Enhanced Sanji which is a technological battle and there's some emotion there right So either of those in my opinion are a little bit better so but it's seeming uh, like Marco's gonna like- fight King though that's seeming like it's in stone yeah, um, I don't see anyone else who can take that role right now. Uh, it's a little, you know, of a letdown, in my opinion, to Marco, just because I have Marco right now somewhere in between first division commander and, and Yonko. Yonko himself. Yeah, it's kind of like, OK, he he's the kind of person who could clash with Kaido. So why is he? relegated to taking out King. Again, aesthetics are being, you know, satisfied here with the two flaming bird first division commander. So it's okay. But if it's utilizing Marco, I also kind of feel like even though the anime is going to extrapolate on a lot of these panels, it might mean that Marco and King's bow gets taken off screen a little bit because Marco himself is not as relevant uh, to this current generation. And it seems to be that this arc is about this current generation. I mean, Oda That's even true. brought Apu back and Apu is fighting now. And it's like, okay, so Apu is not out for the count, which means, again, it's still kind of this supernova arc uh, type of thing. Apu and whatever he's going to be doing later on is still relevant for some reason. Mm-hmm. So... From that regard, yeah, um, it seems like it's going to be Marco versus King. King, yeah, and that and that's just like how I see it because I'm I'm looking at these panels trying to see if there's anything else we can pull from that, but that seems like it's pretty much it because there's no sight of of uh, Queen anywhere, and I miss the Apu versus X Drake, so it seems like they're going to skirmish. Yeah, I so, mean, it's. Right, like uh, I, I, I see it too. It, it's right it's, above uh, yeah. the chopper panel. Yeah, it's right above the chopper panel. So, um, and we see Beppo and Hawkins. I mean, you is that Hawkins, someone... or is that, or is that one of King's people next to Beppo and next to Chopper? You see that that might be one of one of uh, kids' people, Heat Wave or whatever. You're talking about Heat, yeah. Heat, who's saying uh, how pathetic. Uh, mm-hmm. And the other guys also with uh, kids crew. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know why it looks like old man Hirogoro against uh, in that panel with uh, Apu. But regardless of that, um, I'm just oh, yeah, saying, that, you know, the, the new generation are all still in some way at play here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ones who aren't there, I don't see how they're going to show up at any given point. but. If Apu is still up and moving, that's still a push for this new generation being relevant. So I don't know how much of Marco and King we're going to see at that rate. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's a good point. Man, I would love to know more about King because of the race. And I think Odo will give us that. But like you said, most of the fight's going to be off screen. Yeah. So uh, I do also want to give props to Jimbe, as you were saying. Um, Again, he, he's been very, very surprising in the new world. You know, the way that he 
took care of Big Mom in Whole Cake Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still don't know how he, you know, escaped. But when Big Mom saw him before Robin rolled her away, she was like, "He was like, uh, Jimmy, I'm gonna get you back for what you did to my fleet." So it's like Jimbe did, you know, some major damage, and to see that he is, you know, okay. uh, I mean, see that he's okay. But like again, this is this goes back to um, what they were saying about Mihawk during Marine Ford, where you know they were talking about in a battle of swordsmen. You know, if your focus is not on the battle for even a moment, you know that can lead to your death. And we see that me. Hawk is literally watching Luffy while battling everybody. Like, he's not even paying attention to the battles that he's in. And here we see Jimbe is completely, like, not paying attention to who's who and just has him pinned. And it's like, yo, that's very, very impressive, you know. Now, Does that it, mean that who's who just is a warm? Because, see, I could see it's something like, because depending on if Paro Sparrow and the rest of the whole cake people come up, I could see Jim, like you said, for Sanji with Jack, I could see who's who just being a warm up for Jimbe, and then we get Jimbe versus King, Jimbe versus Queen. I don't know. All I know is that when Jack said that um, the uh, red scabbards are too much for the Toby Ropo to handle, that, that to me was a very definitive kind yes. of power scaling thing that kind of crushed my hopes of Sasaki and who's who being borderline because I felt like Jack would have been like, you know, no black Maria stay back. Uh, only me, you know, who's who Sasaki or, you know, what, like he wouldn't have something so definitive as the Toby Ropo can't handle the, you know, the red, red scabbard, you know, weakened state. Like, which I is weird to me. Like, Inu and Neku, if they were in their, you know, Sulong forms, and he's like, no, oh, the Toby Ropo can't handle that. But it's like they're half dead, and he's still like, "Nah, y'all can't handle it." You know, he didn't specify now, is that, like is that I have his, a vendetta. Is that his ego? Could that be an no, ego? No, thing? That's what I'm saying, though. Like, he could have said, "Like, don't worry about it. I'll handle it." Like, mm. you guys could handle it, but don't. But I, I I'm going yeah, to handle it. That's true. Or I'm already on my way. Like, he could have said something else that wasn't. You guys can't handle it. it yeah, that's been stand down. That was straightforward. Yeah, true. So it's like, that was like, okay, hold on. Is that a definitive power scaling thing? And then you have that, you know, panel that you brought up that I kind of slept on. And it's like, okay, well, we have Jimbe who seems to just be like, okay, I can focus on this completely other thing while holding off who's who. And it's like, okay, either Jimbe is significantly higher in these rankings than maybe we're giving him credit for. Or the Toby Robo is not as strong as we thought. Not, yeah. And and again, this goes to the faith that Sanji has. Uh, So I just remember something earlier, you know, I thought it was almost unusual when Luffy and um, Sanji, you know, left Nami and uh, Usopp to go up against page one and Ulti. And I understood, I was like, okay, at some point, these lower Straw Hats have to level up. Mm-hmm. But I was still like, man, like, Ulti could literally kill these two, literally. And I was literally scared when she was headbutting them, and we saw that their skulls, you know, were cracking. At least Usopp's skull yeah, his was cracking. Was done. It's like, yo, like, they could really die. And Usopp, and not Usopp, um, Luffy and Sanji literally like, all right, like, take care of them. <laughs> and so it's like, the faith is really there, but I was like, yo. Are we sure? Yeah. Y'all ready? <laughs> like, like, so I, I'm, I'm very excited because I think that all of the Straw Hats are essentially about to ascend. Yeah. For, for, for sure. And I think I, that's what, in speak, getting to our prediction part of this, because I'm pretty sure that's yeah. pretty much all the stuff that's we it. really need yeah. to cover from the chapter. I don't see us going to the rooftop next week. I think we're going to be down below switching from Robin. I think, I don't think we're, I don't think we stay with Robin and uh, Brooke, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do next chapter just to get that out of the way. But I think it's time to start seeing Jim Bay, who's who finish up Sasaki, Frankie, get more OT page one and then set up Sanji. And I feel like that's going to be at least the next five chapters. Then we go back to the roof. 
Yeah, I mean, the way that we have noticed that, like, uh, Oda Rice is that he likes to kind of jump forward and jump backwards sometimes. So we know that Luffy's on a 10-minute timer, basically, uh, with his hockey. So at this point, uh, you know, flushing out some of these skirmishes. So now, we, you know, we know where everyone is. You know, Robin is finally with... Um, Brooke and Black Maria, like all the yeah, battles are Black set up Maria. except Sanji, and now I feel like that's what we right. have to set up next week. And Sanji is a relevant character where, again, he's been taking what can be perceived as L's for other characters, such as Luffy and Zoro, would not be put in a position by Oda where they would have to scream for Nami or Robin to take care of something. Uh, because I mean, you know, they'll the, the whoop a woman's ass if they need to, they don't care, but that's their character. But, anyways, with that being said. You know, it's like Sanji needs his own screen time. So I definitely concur with you that uh, some of these battles need to be wrapped up. I don't know if this panel with Jinbei is a sign that Jinbei is kind of offhand, you know, who's who for real. That's going to be tragic for who's who scaling if, you know, we just come back and Jinbei's beat him up off screen. But I can kind of see him being a warm up, but Sanji definitely. Uh, needs to get his own panel time. So I can see Robin uh, and Frankie's battles kind of wrapping up. I, I Like I said, I do want to see Robin expand on her moveset, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily expect Oda to spend a whole lot of time on that. So that's something where I expect the anime to kind of embellish a little bit. Uh, but but I wouldn't be wise, surprised if we get like seven chapters for the Straw Hats to have their battles. Yeah, but I mean, if, if, if that's going to happen, then I definitely would want a little bit of back and forth. I wouldn't necessarily... Mm. I, don't, I don't know if I would really enjoy a lot of... Just Straw Hat battles. battles. That yeah. are just singular battles, though. Like, show me, okay, Robin is using this technique with Black Maria, and I got a couple of panels of that. Show me... Jim Bay is, you know, fighting back and forth. Yeah. You know, so give me that back and forth. And then it's like moving into the Sanji element where it's like Sanji meets up with the scabbers. Jack is there. It's a collision or something. And it's like, okay, this is another Sanji chapter. But now we're getting, you know, what I think the majority of the fandom would want, which is a 1v1 type of battle. And it's dedicated to Sanji. I think we can all like that. Uh, being essentially full screen. And eventually, after we flesh out Sanji and, you know, whoever his battles he gets, whether he, you know, stacks up to Queen at some point or not, uh, we go back to the rooftop and then Oda would hit us with that classical. So within the last 10 minutes, this, this is happen. what's happened. Yeah. And so that, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing hybrid uh, Kaido anytime soon. And also, I, I believe when we go back to the rooftop, it's yeah. flashback time. I mean, yeah. It, For Kaido. It has to be flashback, but, like, flashback time in what context, in your opinion? Like, this is what happened in the last 10 minutes, or flashback as in, like, a Kaido flashback or a Big Mom flashback? See, I'm thinking what? a Kaido Big Mom flash. Like, I think I think we what you said of this is the last 10 minutes, but I do think it something will happen when we see what's happened in that last 10 minutes that will trigger a memory for Kaido going back. Cause we got to learn about him and big mom with rocks. Like that has to happen. Right. right. And I feel I like mean, that's going to either be the start of act four or the end of act three. I concur with you again, because this is completely kind of like unrelated, but I do love how sometimes the one piece anime and the manga can kind of hint at certain things, even though they're completely a different timestamp. So you bring up rocks, and I love the way that we got to see the family-oriented side of Whitebeard in this latest anime chapter yep. where uh, he's talking about, like, I can't take you aboard, Odin. Because I hated my last crew. Because I hated my last crew. So it's like, in this case, it's reminding us about rocks. So to your point you know it, it would be interesting and it's like at what point would it make the most sense for us to learn about rocks with whitebeard being dead uh shiki is i think 
either directly or indirectly implied to have been a part of Rocks. Yeah. So we don't know when he's going to come back into the, the canon on, you know, manga panel. Uh, so from that regard, at what point does it do make do sense it? Yeah. to do it? And who's the last person, what's the last context in which Kaido would need it to have gone hybrid? And I'm thinking that if Kaido had this against Odin, I, I don't know. Maybe he took Odin's, you know, uh, warning to get stronger. And this is what he came up with. Maybe he had this and we didn't, you know, get to see that. Or maybe this is something that was reserved from his Rocks days when, you know, he was literally going up against Whitebeard and Big Mom, perhaps, on a daily basis. And this is the last time he's had to use it. So by the time we get the reveal, Big Mom, you know, sees this and she has that flashback or it, something along it, those lines. It could even be like, like you said, see, I'm like, and I'm, I'm going to take some of what you said and, and, and bring it here. This yeah. is something that he developed in the, because I know we said constantly he didn't prepare, he didn't prepare. The hybrid is his preparation. And since Big Mom said the thing of, I gave you that fruit when we lost our old captain, when she right. sees the hybrid form, she could say, Kaido, look how far you've come. And then bow, recollection. And Kaido's like, I have come a long way. Recollection to where he has come from. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because you got to do it at some point. Because if you don't, to me, the longer you wait in the fight, the less important it is. Because the closer you get to Luffy beating your ass, we don't give a damn about that. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a little bit too cliche. Uh, you know, it, it was something that, you know, this is absolutely no shade, but it was hilarious in Demon Slayer because, you know, you would be <laughs> beating the crap out of a demon and then all of a sudden you get a flashback and you're like, oh, he's about to die. Like, literally, it's his last thoughts. So it's like, oh, you're going to humanize someone at the very end. And it's like, okay, if you want to see clashing ideologies and moralities, then you've got to flesh out these characters before it gets to that final clash. So it would make sense, you know, to start giving a lot more, you know, backstory on who Kaido is. Uh, Cause his, his number's up. He's, he's not making it past his art. It's time. So, but Christian, that's everything. Yeah. Tell other people where they can find you at on social media. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, A R C H S Z. In art season, or if you want to see my graphic content, it's going to be design season LLC on both platforms. Y'all go follow Christian. Make sure you check out his art. Monday or Tuesday, Dragon Video dropping. One of those. Subscribe to the YouTube. Join the Discord. Come join the conversation. It's a fun time. All the communities there. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. And that's pretty much it. We'll talk to y'all next week. Peace.